like it before, but it's curious how one never gets used to destitution. That day, I'd come to Wallington's to sell my sapphire earrings. Uh, pardon me for a moment, gentlemen. Uh, may I fetch someone to serve you, madam? No, thank you. Not yet. I, um, I want to look at your charming frivolities. Every thread of the Alance on lace is perfect. And the design is extraordinarily delicate. She must have it, Arthur. Yes, I think she'll be delighted with it. I'm glad you told me about this, Cecil. That's a perfect tribute to an enchanting wife and an enchanted husband. Well, really, Cecil, what a salesman you would have made. Why, oh, really, Cecil, what a salesman you make. <laughs> <laughs> if I may say so, Lord Windermere, you're wise to be guided by Mr. Graham. His taste is faultless. My dear Robert, the only way a poor man can indulge his taste is by selling it. <laughs> Your wit is improving, Cecil. I'm entirely persuaded. I shall take the fan. Oh, very good. Wait a minute, Arthur. I think you should have your wife's name on the fan. It'll make it so much more personal. Oh, most thoughtful touch. How would you do that? Oh, something very delicate. Uh, rubies. An exquisite tracery of rubies. That's it. Excellent. Her name is Margaret. And her birth date should be on it, too. Oh, very good. It's the 24th of April, and be sure to have it April, done in time. April. If you want to carry the fan at her birthday ball. Of course, my lord. It'll be finished in ample time. Good afternoon, then. Good day. Good day. May I be of service, madam? Lord Windermere is mistaken. Lady Windermere's birthday is the 21st of April. Lord Windermere said the 24th, madam. I just told you he was mistaken. You must remind him that he is wrong as soon as possible. Well, certainly, if you say so, madam. One can't help thinking that Lord Windermere would know better than anybody. Not better than anybody. Her birthday is the 21st. Oh, I'm sorry. I just came in to see Wallington for a moment. Of course, I'll wait. There's no need to. I'm glad of a bit more time. There are too many lovely things here for me to make up my mind quickly. Thank you for your most altruistic indecision. I think uh, my idea of her name in rubies on the fan should be worth at least ten pounds more. Well, I think five pounds is sufficient, Mr. Graham. You know, I was going to bring in the Duchess of Berwick on Thursday to see the emeralds. Very well, ten pounds, Mr. Graham. Thank heavens. I remember in time. My wife's birthday isn't the 24th, it's the 21st. Oh, I already know, my lord. Uh, this lady was kind enough to inform me of the correct date. I'm sorry. I couldn't help hearing. I'm so glad you did hear. Thank you. Perhaps you wonder how I knew. Well, my vice, my most innocent vice, is reading the news of London society. And there's been so much about Lady Windermere's birthday ball on the 21st. Of course. The 24th is our wedding anniversary. My memory is always in a state of confusion about dates. <laughs> I'm afraid it's even gone into a confused state about names. You cannot blame your memory for something that was never in it. My name is Mrs. Erlin, but you don't know me. Oh, but I do know you, I'm sure. No. Perhaps Lord Windermere wishes that he did. Oh, you came back too, Cecil. Why, certainly. I thought of taking another look at some of Wallington's precious little trinkets. I'm sure we've met. No, Lord Windermere. I'm positive. There's something about you. I know this isn't the first time I've seen you. And I hope it won't be the last. I've just decided to stay in London. They say it's a very small place. I hope it's true. How remarkable that we should meet again so soon, and in the same company. I uh, dare say you left a glove here, Robert. Well, hmm? of course I did. But you've got both gloves on. I always carry a third glove to leave behind. Then I can return for it and find out how my friends have been improving their opportunities behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't deserve it, Mrs. Erlen. But let me present Lord Darlington, Mr. Graham, the two best-dressed men in London. Ah, but there is a difference between us, Mrs. Erlen. You see, I live by my wits. Lord Darlington is a much more usual type. He lives on his money. The witty so often undervalue the rich. And vice versa. The settings on my earrings are rather loose. Will you have them tightened and send them over to me? To Mrs. Erlin, Albemarle Hotel. Uh, yes, madam. Good afternoon. No, I didn't sell my earrings, after all. It, uh, shall we say, came over me that it was not going to be necessary to part with them. I knew one of you three men would solve my problem. <laughs> <laughs> 